This question is from 1974 AP Physics B, and now these topics are covered in AP Physics 2. And in this question, we have that the diagram above shows some of the equipotentials in the plane perpendicular to two parallel charged uh, metal cylinders. The potential of each line is labeled. The left cylinder is charged positively. What is the sign of the charge on the other cylinder? So in these two pictures, I have two positive charges and two opposite charges. And when you have two positive charges, whether they are oh, two same charges, whether they're positive or negative, you will have a certain pattern in uh, equipotential lines. And this pattern reminds me of um, the peanut. My students will say it looks like a peanut. So equipotential lines, they are perpendicular to each um, electric field line. So right there, you would have the right angle. And each equipotential line is um, at a certain level of potential difference. And then in the problem that we are given, each potential difference for each poten equal potential line is given. So imagine if you look at the mountain and you can be anywhere on this level of the mountain and you will have the same potential energy. And maybe on this level of the mountain is going to be a different potential energy and so on. If you look at the top of the mountain, you will see lines that would look something like this, or topographic math. Here is an example of the topographic math. And you, hear, you see at the bottom picture, um, you see the mountains, and each line represents the same elevation from the uh, sea level. And then of uh, the top pictures, both of them, represent those elevations as um, the lines, and those are equal potential lines the lines that carry the same potential energy above the ground. Same for our potential um, lines, equal potential lines, uh, with the electric field lines. So for electric field lines, the, um, they are in blue, and they are leaving the, potential, the positive charge, so here are the electric field lines, the blue, and they're leaving the positive charge, and they're getting into the negative charge. So between two positive charges, if you start building electro equipotential lines, you will notice that um, they will form a, a graph or an image of a peanut. And then for two charges that are different, they will have a line somewhere in between them. So the way equipotential lines or the voltage is going to be, um, it's going to distribute the strongest uh, is closest to the uh, or the largest number is going to be closest to the charge and go farther and farther away and it's going to be smaller and smaller. So the first one could be maybe 100 and the next one could be a 90 and the next one would be an 80 depending what the intervals between them and they may be 70 and then 60 and so on. And so the farther away they go from the positive charge the less voltage is going to be left. So here, maybe it's going to be the 60 volts. For two different charges, the closest to the negative is going to be the largest negative number. So maybe that's going to be negative 100 volts. And the next one is going to be maybe 90 volts, negative 90 volts, and so on. And then again, the po po most positive closest is going to be maybe 100 volts, just for example. And then the next one maybe is going to be positive 90 and then positive 80 and so on. And then we'll come to the point between two charges when you're going to have zero volt. So between two opposite charges, you will have a line where you have a zero volt. Between two same charges, you will have a peanut kind of picture. So coming back to our problem, they say the left cylinder is charged positively. What is the sign of the charge on the other cylinder? And you can see that both of them are charged positively. So they're both positively charged.
You can also tell that they are positively charged is that it starts with the positive charge um, the potential difference of poten equal potential line carries 10 volt and then has 0 volt and negative 10 and negative 20. So uh, it starts with a positive, the same for the other one, 10, and then 0, and then uh, negative 20, they share the same one. So you can see that they have to be both positive because it starts from the positive and goes away with some, like less, or less and less and smaller and smaller number. For the next question, they say on the diagram above, sketch lines to describe the electric field produced by the charged cylinders. So when I do graph my uh, lines for the equal for electric field lines, they cannot cross. And um, so if this is a positive positive charge, and this is a positive charge, the electric field lines are gonna go away. Uh, from the positive charge. So it's going to go like this in that direction. So I have electric field lines like that. So when I do my, equa, my, my electric field lines, I have to make sure that these angles look like right angles. So everywhere right here, I want to have right angles because my um, electric field lines are perpendicular to the equal potential lines. So the graph for the lines is going to be something like this. And then for the next question, they say, determine the potential difference between A and B, between the points A and B. So VA minus VB. Potential difference at B is negative 10, because that's negative 10 volt line. And the potential difference on equal potential line A um, has negative 20, and this one had negative 10. So that equal potential line had negative 10. So when I am finding the VA minus VB, I have VA minus VB equals to VA is negative 20 minus negative 10. So that is going to be negative 10 volts. And for the next question, they say, how much work is done by the field of a charge of, so they give you the charge, the charge is equal to 0.5 coulombs, is moved along a path from point A to point E, and then to point D. So from point A to point E, the potential difference doesn't change, it stays the same. So if the charge move from point A to point E, we have the voltage is equal to the work done on the charge. So the work is done when you have the charge times the change of the potential difference. So the work done to move the charge from point A to point E, um, right here, the work is going to be equal to zero joules. But then they are saying that it also moved to point D. So when it moves to point D, so here is point D, the potential difference is going to change. The potential difference on D is 10 volts, and the potential difference on um, E and A line is negative 20 volts. So if I'm looking for the work here, that is going to be the charge, which is 0.5. So I'm using this formula times the change of the potential difference. So if I am calculating the potential difference, I have D, which is 10 minus negative 20, uh, the potential different line for AE. So that gives me the work is equal to 0.5 times 30. And that gives me the work equal to 15 joules. Because the charge is positive, so the, at point A, we had the charge that was positive. Positive charge does not want to come close to the positive charge. So when you move a positive charge uh, against the field lines, uh, you are doing the negative work. So right here, you would have a negative work done on the charge. And this is all I have for 1974 AP Physics B FRQ question. Uh, so now again, these topics are covered in AP Physics 2. 
and thank you for watching if you like or if you learned something from this video like it subscribe and um, thank you i hope i see you in my future videos